So you've heard me talk about the story timeline and moving back and forth along this timeline to see what different aspects of your story or different aspects of your character look like along this line. Let me show you what I mean. Today I'm going to show you what the story timeline is and we're going to look at a positive character arc along that story timeline. When you draw any graph, you have an x-axis and a y-axis. Our story timeline lies on the x-axis. It's a straight line that represents the passing of time. It depicts the beginning, the middle, and the end of a story. Everything we write occurs within the bounds of this timeline. And it's important to understand that any amount of time can pass between the start and the end of a story, and it doesn't have to be in the same increments. There can be time jumps, flashbacks, moments where the story moves incredibly fast over a couple of days, and other times when the pacing slows considerably and it can take months for something to happen. Now your y-axis represents the character's emotional state of being at any given point along the story timeline. I've scaled it arbitrarily where zero represents a neutral emotional state, 10 represents the character's peak, and negative 10 represents their absolute low. So along this axis is where we measure how our character is doing, how they're feeling, how they're coping with life at each time increment. And as we can see, nothing about a complex three-dimensional character is linear, including a linear character arc. Based on what's happening in their life, they'll end up going through a series of highs and lows. So even though their journey can be averaged out to look like a straight line, in reality, it actually looks more like short waves that trend upwards. And our goal for writing a positive character story arc is that by the end, we want our character to have reached their full potential. In today's examples, we're going to examine two scenarios where our character starts either from a neutral position or from a low or negative position. If your character starts at a neutral position, in the most basic sense, they probably don't have a firm grasp of who they are. I'm not talking about the goals they've achieved. I'm talking about who they are as a human being and the reason for the book itself, which is to explore the character's emotional journey. So at a glance, our neutral character might have everything those looking in from the outside could ever hope to achieve. For the purposes of storytelling, this would be the character's true awakening to their life's purpose. They just don't know it yet. And the inciting incident changes everything for them. Let's use a well-known story trope. Think about one of those stories where the main character has a successful corporate job and they're about to get a promotion of a lifetime. They're going to be partner. It's everything they've ever wanted. They're also planning their destination wedding to the heir of something important who's ridiculously wealthy. And just when everything's going perfectly, they get that dreaded phone call. I'm so sorry to tell you, but there's been an accident. Your sister and her husband have died in a plane crash. We've just gone through the wall and they've left their four kids in your care. This is the inciting incident. This is a point right at the beginning that changes everything for the main character. In fantasy or adventure, this is called the call to action moment. In this first scenario, the character is actively achieving their goals, but they're not at their full potential. Their perception is shaped by society's checklist of success that half the population is chasing in some shape or form. So your character immediately feels instantly relatable. But this is a snapshot. It's a single moment in our character's timeline. Specifically, this is point zero. We see a snippet of who our character is at the start. And as the story moves along the timeline, we look at their decisions and might be inclined to think, wow, I would have never done that. That's really stupid. And that's a good thing because you're letting the reader see a perfect picture through the window and then bit by bit you feed them contextualized information that allows them to understand why the character feels the way they do and why they're making these terrible decisions. And this contextualized information happens to be their backstory. The character, like every single human being on the planet, is a culmination of every experience that has shaped them into believing that they need to pursue a particular life path. So when the readers start following along, they gain perspective from this backstory. So you as the writer have achieved three things. Firstly, you've practiced restraint by starting the story where the action begins and not info dumping your character's backstory. 
Secondly, you've let your reader form assumptions about the main character based on society's ideals of success. And thirdly, you swiftly make your reader feel bad about having formed these snap judgments about the character as you strategically give them more insight into why your character is reacting in a particular way to their circumstances. So the character trajectory, which is upwards, shows us that they learn to deal and develop as a character as they start to realize that family is important. And they're not only navigating the kid's grief with therapy and activities, they haven't had a moment to realize that they need to deal with their own grief. So by the end, as they've grown as a character, they'll realize, somewhat cheesily and entertainingly, they don't want to be on the partner track. And that this whole other way of living is so much more fulfilling than they could have ever imagined. And in that moment, they've reached their character peak. They might even get rid of that toxic fiancé. Who knows? Now, we're going to consider what happens when the character starts at a low. In this scenario, when the story's action begins, our character is at their absolute low. When the character starts in a negative position, as you move along the story timeline, you can connect their emotional state to each time increment. The important thing to remember when you start your character at a low is that this emotional state is attached to a set of beliefs and values that they don't even resonate with, which is probably why their life feels so out of control. They're doing things that don't feel authentic, but they believe will get them further in life. So quite basically, the character begins their story not knowing a damn thing about who they are and what they want. The overall direction of the main character's growth as the plot progresses is the same as the neutral scenario, but the steeper line represents the much harder journey the main character has to endure to learn who it is they truly are. Despite their hard work, their perseverance, their IQ, their test scores, they just couldn't get a shoe in. Their life is a mess. They're getting kicked out of their rent-controlled apartment, they barely have food to eat, and their lights just got cut. In a general sense, they have a negative way of perceiving the world, again, likely due to factors that were prominent in their life before the starting point. So as the writer, you'd have to fully explore their backstory and practice restraint in giving that information away to your readers. And then this character gets the same phone call. Sister, husband, gone. Kids are yours, and this is your inciting incident. And although the main character, along with the kids, are navigating grief and getting to know each other and lean on each other, a few things improve immediately. Most obviously, it's the housing, food, and money situation, which takes away a huge chunk of the mental burden for our main character. But once these things are sorted, we still have to address the main character's constant negative attitude, the fact that no matter how hard they try, nothing seems to work out. And as the writer, again, showing restraint, you start giving your reader some insight into your main character's background. Maybe they were adopted or maybe parentified, but I'm going to go with parentified, right? So they've always felt a little bit behind in life. And now that they have to take care of these kids that they didn't even create, in fact, they didn't even want these kids at all. But in taking care of the kids, they begin to learn more about themselves, which is something that they could never have done when they were a young teenager raising their baby sister, the one who had just died, leaving those four kids behind. And now, of course, our main character's brain is fully developed as an adult, so they can process these realizations that were stored far back in the trauma centers of their brain and refuse to confront. And then the main character begins to see these similarities between their younger sister who's just passed and her kids and feels the sense of familiarity, but not with disdain or contempt like they did when they were a young teenager, but with love and affection and this feeling of wanting to protect the kids and realizing that all five of them need to deal with their grief, get therapy and heal, but they can do it together. And then, of course, this has to happen, but someone on the dad's side steps up to take these kids and wants to raise them. And just as they're all saying teary goodbyes and driving off, the main character suddenly comes to the realization that, no, they want the kids. This is what they were meant to do, and they can do it. And now they're able to heal their childhood trauma by leaning into it and having the kids grow up in a loving and caring home. And this is when they hit their peak. They're happy, they're content, they're at peace. This is the life that they choose. So it's definitely a, a steeper, more tumultuous journey for the main character to self-actualize, but they're capable of it and they do it. 
And these are just simple examples of what a positive linear character arc can look like. And as the writer, you can start their journey from anywhere along the emotional axis or the Y axis, just as long as over time, you're adding more to their character than you're taking away. And then cheesily and entertainingly, again, maybe they meet a single dad at the school drop-off, the heir to something really important and who is ridiculously wealthy. You can see where this is going. So by the end of the story, the main character doesn't just have everything. They've achieved everything personally. They realized what's important in life what makes them happy, that sort of thing. And this is around about the time you can wrap it up.